I'm James. Welcome to Shamu Stadium. How you guys doing today? Ready to see some killer rounds up close? Alright. Thank you so much for joining us today. Your curiosity is wonderful. Just like you, it was my curiosity about nature that led me to working right here at SeaWorld. We receive so many questions each and every day about killer whales from kids and grown-ups of all ages. We've gathered these questions together to put them in our killer whales up close book to share with you today. And we've connected the book so you can see everything up on the big screen. If you're ready to get started, it is my privilege to introduce you to Autumn. Let's take a closer look. The remarkable thing about killer whales, no matter which type, is that they are found throughout our global ocean, from the Arctic to the Antarctic, and literally everywhere in between. They are found in so many different habitats and depend on such a variety of marine life for survival that killer whales are more intertwined with the fate of our ocean than any other marine animal. Truly. These awesome animals are the living symbol of our ocean, representing so much more than their own species. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Nakai! <laughs> Alright, so let's get to some of your great questions. Here we go. So, many people wonder what it's like to be a trainer. In fact, raise your hand if you've ever wanted to train animals. That's a lot. And you should meet the dedicated men and women who interact with our family of whales every day. Up on the far left of main stage, we've got Vicky. Woo! Again, I'm Autumn. We have Amber. Woo! And on the far right, it's Carly. Woo! Our team is so passionate about what they do each and every day. It makes me think of another one of your great questions. Here it is. Do the trainers talk to the whales? I'll let you answer that one, Amber. Oh. Well, that is a great question. We may not talk to the whales the way that you and I talk to each other. We have taught the whales different hand signals that help us communicate with them. Our ongoing communication is an important part of developing the strong relationships we have with these whales. Because of this connection, one of the things we're able to do is answer important questions through research. Here at 
SeaWorld, we have a unique opportunity to conduct research about killer whales, asking important questions that can only be answered in a setting like this. So much of what we learn here is being used to help killer whales in the wild. Of course, there are other questions that can only be explored by studying whales in the ocean. By exploring questions both at SeaWorld and in the wild, our combined research gives all of us a better understanding of killer whales and the places they live. And that's what I call working together. Research flowing in both directions. From our park, to the wild, and back again. That way, everyone benefits. All right, let's check out another one of your questions. <laughs> Perfect. This individual wonders why whales jump. And I just happen to have that emoji. Check it out. <laughs> well, killer whales communicate a lot of different ways. Sometimes they vocalize, and sometimes they use their bodies. A jump like that is called a freak. And they're making a sound on the top of the water. When the whale's body slaps the top of the water, it creates a commotion above and below the surface. This might be to show some excitement, to display a little power, or to get the attention of the other whales. Some of you may have heard about, about our youngest killer whale calf, Amaya, our SeaWorld social media fan's top neighbor. Here at SeaWorld, we've watched as killer whale calves rely on their mothers for everything, from the very first moments of their birth. As a calf grows and gains some independence, it is looked after by other whales in the pod, too. They help the mother protect the calf, teach it survival skills, and show the calf how to romp and play. Killer whales live in family-like groups known as pods. Like human families, their pods can range in size, from just a handful of whales up to a few dozen. Well, that's a lot of questions. Believe it or not, we get them every day. We sure do. Killer whales communicate using all sorts of sounds. Let's listen. Sometimes they blow a bubble, bump into each other, or scratch each other with their teeth, causing what are called rake marks. These are multi-line marks that you see on the skin of whales and dolphins. One of the ways that these animals display dominance during social interactions, both in the wild and at sea world. So we've learned how the whales communicate with each other, but how do we communicate with them? Through signals. Here at SeaWorld, we communicate with our whales, and we want the next generation to be able to do the same.
check out another one of your questions. Oh, who takes care of you, Shandu? I love this one. This, let's just give you a peek at how much we care for these extraordinary animals. Okay, Adam, are the trainers ready? We sure are. The training you see here today actually allows us to take care of the whales. They participate in their own health care. These are all behaviors that we can train using small approximations or baby steps so that the animals are calm and comfortable during these husbandry behaviors. When the whales learn to offer their tail flutes, like you can see Amber and Ike over on the other side of the pool, we're able to collect a blood sample. Their veins actually run very close to the surface of their skin there in the tail flutes, and that is a prime area for us to collect that sample. Now from the blood, we can tell all about the whales and check on their overall health. The slide out behavior is more than an excellent photo opportunity. Right here, Corky's gonna show off this slide out. We have a giant track their weight to make sure the whales are healthy and our calves are growing properly. Now the higher end behaviors such as mass swims, stage slides, and breaches are behaviors killer whales do out in the wild as well as right here at SeaWorld. So look over at main stage, here's Mackay. You know, many of our guests also wonder, how much does a killer whale need to eat every day to stay healthy? Well, just like us, each killer whale has different dietary needs. For instance, Ulysses, he's our largest whale, weighing in at just under 10,000 pounds, and he eats right around 160 pounds of food every single day. Amaya, who is still nursing from her mom, eats right around 35 pounds a day. It's important to note the whales get all of their food no matter what they do each and every day. Because we've been able to determine how much killer whales need to eat every day to stay healthy, researchers in the field are able to use this information to determine if ocean habitats are healthy enough for killer whale populations to thrive, and that type of information is invaluable. You know, food, exercise, and physicals from our veterinarians aren't all our killer whales need. Each animal's well-being is so important to us, and we want to make sure their minds are stimulated and challenged, too. This type of mental stimulation and enrichment comes through learning, interaction, and play. If you focus your attention on the streams, you'll see the whales playing with kelp and even giant killer whale toys, jello. These are all things that we can give the whale as a type of reinforcement. Each whale is gonna have a different preference and that's part of building a relationship with them and finding out what things they seem to like and they seem to not like. You can see Carly hanging out with Corky. She's giving her some ice cubes. This is one of Corky's favorite treats. And right here in the slide out, Vicky is just giving the Kai some love, some rub down, tactile. That's one of the things that she has found is highly reinforcing for the Kai. And even on stage, we've got Amber hanging out with Ike and she's spraying him down with the water hose. This is kind of like a little back rub or a mist for the whales and a lot of them seem to enjoy it and sometimes they'll even play in those water hoses on their own time. Now with all the toys and games we provide, the best enrichment still seems to be social interaction with the other whales and our team of experienced trainers. All right, now a question for all the kids who want to know, who would win the killer whale square off against a great white shark? All right, who thinks the great white shark would win? Raise your hand. All right, who thinks the killer whale would win? Raise your hand. Yeah, killer whales. You see, great white sharks hunt alone, while killer whales have a pod of other killer whales. So it's not even really a competition. Killer whales have even been known to hunt for a blue whale. You know how big a blue whale is? At over 80 feet, it's the largest animal to ever exist on the planet. But killer whales are able to hunt these huge animals because they coordinate, collaborate, and cooperate. They work together to overcome challenges much greater than themselves. You know, we can learn a lot from them on how to overcome some of the challenges our ocean faces. If we collaborate, like the killer whales, we can change the fate of the ocean and the world. All right, we get some more questions. Here's some common ones that come in all the time. Here we go. Why do some dorsal fins curve? Great question. Dorsal fins lack any skeletal structure, such as bone or cartilage, to support their height and weight. They're completely made up of connective tissue. 
If the animal spends more time at the surface, the tissue may weaken and the fin will bend. We occasionally see curved dorsal fins in the wild, like you see on the photographs, and here at SeaWorld. Up next, how fast can they swim? Well, depending on their body weight, killer whales can swim up to 30 miles an hour. Check it out. Next question, how much water can their tails slash? Well, their tails, or flukes as they're called, are strong enough to fling a whole lot of water about halfway up these stands. Last one, if all the whales splashed all at once, could they get the whole audience wet? Well, maybe not the whole audience. You know, killer whales are so inspiring. The more we learn about them, the more we see they represent more than just themselves. Truly, to better understand the killer whale is to better understand the ocean. Never stop learning about the natural world around you. Be sure to visit SeaWorldSanDiego.com for your free download of the killer whale's up-close book and share it with your family and friends. From all of us to all of you, thank you for